Hey everyone, this is Paul from Ortho Eval Pal. What I want to do today is talk to you about cervical nerve root compression and a special test that I developed to help identify what level the cervical nerve root compression is at. Um, this test will also help to sort out if a patient has a cervical spine problem versus a shoulder problem and it is actually after having used this for many years um, has been a very good predictor on how well people do after surgery for cervical nerve root decompression all right so there are really um, three causes of cervical nerve root compression and as you take a look here i'm going to try to come in just a little bit the number one reason people get cervical nerve root compression is because a Cervical herniated disc can protrude into the cervical foramen and take up space. Anytime the nerve root is getting compressed or overstretched, it's going to be irritated and cause a lot of discomfort. Okay, so a cervical herniated disc is the number one reason. The number two reason is facet arthropathy. The facet joint sits really close inside the foramen and when it becomes thickened, um, can cause some compression on the nerve root. And the third thing would be a cervical spine instability. So basically, you need to think about it this way. One vertebrae here, one vertebrae here, and the nerve root comes between them. Now, if you have slippage of one vertebrae over the other, you can see how that would now become, quote unquote, guillotined a little bit and cause some nerve root compression. So with that being said, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about the different levels that we are going to be working with because this test works best with C5 through T1 issues. Okay, so just a quick review of myotomes. I want to start with C5, which would be biceps. And then I also like to test supination. So I have them hold the arm here and I try to turn the hand inward. And I find that to be very reliable in identifying a C5 nerve root compression problem. C5 also controls the deltoids, so we'll hold here and give some resistance. Then I go to C6, which would be wrist extension, so hold the wrist up, and I try to push down. C7 would be triceps, so hold here, don't let me push up. C8, finger flexion, and I always like to test the OK sign, I find this to be very helpful. I have them pinch and then I try to open them up. And then T1 would be spreading of the fingers and testing the intrinsics right there. All right, so the way I like to do this test is I like to have them on a table and I don't give them a pill for a reason because I want them to get some of those concordant signs and symptoms that they had when they first came in, right? So I wanna see if just laying back into extension cause the reproduction of their pain. So I'm gonna have you lie right down on your back. And I place them in this position. Now, usually they, over you know five to 10 seconds, they might start to say, oh, my arm is starting to hurt, I'm getting pain in my shoulder blade, I'm getting some discomfort in the chest. One of the downfalls to this test, and really the only downfall in my opinion is that it requires two people to do the test unless you have a cervical traction device that you can use while testing the patient's strength, okay? So for today, we're gonna do the C7 level and the tricep because we just want to be able to see this well with the video, okay? So what we do after about 30 seconds of laying here with the neck extended in a neutral position, we test the triceps and Michael doesn't have a C7 problem, but he's gonna demonstrate like he does. So we test the triceps and there's kind of a give to it. He may be uncomfortable in the neck, he may have pain in the shoulder blade, he may be having some discomfort in the triceps because it can't fire the whole muscle all at once because he's just not getting good impulses to that muscle. After that, what we do is we flex the neck 15 to 20 degrees straight up and then I tilt him 15 to 20 degrees to the opposite side and I open up that foramen on that side. I don't say anything. Typically, this is where they say, wow, that feels better already, okay? Now I give about 20 to 25 pounds of traction. If they're a little bit smaller, I may do 18 to 20 pounds. Um, if they're having a relief and uh, less discomfort, then um, you don't really need to pull as hard. So I hold this for about 20 to 30 seconds, and then I have the therapist retest the tricep strength and if we find an improvement in strength 
at that level, then we know that this is a C7 nerve root compression. Okay? And I do this with all the other muscle groups. And if there is the muscle group that has the most significant improvement in strength is the one that I'm going to be focusing on a little bit more. So not only have we been able to identify what level this is at much better with this test, but a significant number of my patients who, if they don't get better with conservative treatment, end up in surgery and have improved, significant improved strength while we do this test, they will do significantly better after surgery because the surgeon will be decompressing that, opening up the foramen, and they'll feel better more permanently. And so this has worked out really well for me. You can sit right up. This has worked out really well for me in determining what level it's at, if it's a cervical spine or shoulder problem, or how well they're going to do after surgery. So I hope you enjoyed this new way of testing the cervical spine. I hope it makes sense. If you have questions, please feel free to get in touch with me. I'll keep my information in the show notes. And thank you so much for watching.